Let's talk about arrays. Okay. So what should we do when we want to write a program that calculates the average of 1,000 numbers? Should we declare 1,000 numbers? It's a lot. It's going to be complicated, right? So what's the solution? Arrays. So let's see what it is. So an array is a series of elements of the same type. What is a type? Int, char, bool, type. The same type placed in a contiguous memory uh, location that can be individually referred by adding an index to the unique identifier. Okay, let's just see what it is. So here's the syntax. Uh, let's see what we know. Int we know, right? It's a whole number. And numbers would be the name that I'm going to give my array. And inside of uh, square brackets, I'm going to see how many do I want. So if we take the example from the slide before, if we wanted 1,000 numbers, uh, my array would not be five. It would be 1,000, thousand, right? And let's see how it looks like visually, OK? So supposedly it looks like this in the memory. We have the numbers array, and as you can see, we have five places. Let's say I put information in one of them, put numbers. And what I want to show you here is a few important things. First, each one of the numbers here is going to be from type int, because this is why I declared about. And when I say int, I mean two things to the combine. First, I say it's going to be a whole number. And the other thing I'm going to say, what's the size in memory I need to allocate? Four bytes. Each int is going to be four bytes. So the, my array is going to be four plus four plus four plus four plus four. Okay? It's going to be 20 bytes. Okay? Um, and so that's the one thing that I wanted to show. The other thing is, let's look at the content. So there are two important things here. The content that I need to, to have some kind of access. So, so each number is going to be one after the other in my array. And look above the indexes. What is the indexes? So I need a way to access those numbers. So what the C++ gives me is index. Index starts from 0 and in, in, a, in, a, in a consecutive order goes up. And the last number would be basically the amount of elements minus one, because we start from zero, OK? So if we have five elements in this array, we're going to start from zero, and we're going to end at four. And the reason I have index is for me to access those numbers. So let's look at this command. See out numbers and inside of square brackets two. What does it mean? That I'm going to go to index number two in my numbers array, and I'm going to print it out. So what's the value inside of, in index 2? 54. If I wanted to do, to, if I wanted to print out 100, index 3, that's right, so you got it. The side of the array is known at compilation stage, OK? The, com the compiler needs to know how much memory to allocate to the array. So we're going to learn, hopefully we're going to get there later, how do we can do it more dynamically and not knowing in advance how much space do we need? But for the basic right now, we need to, to, when we write, when we declare about our array, we have to give it a value. We have to give the five or the thousand, whatever we want. We have to give it a value. We have to, before we compile our problem, before we build it, we need to specify how big is it going to be. Arrays and loops. An easy way to access all array elements is through a loop. The following code, and we're going to do it together in a minute, the following code declares an array of five integers and submit a value to each one by reading inputs from the I.O. string, from the screen. Okay? So let's go over it and let's do it together. Okay? So I declare an array variable named ARR. And it has the size of 5. And I declare another variable, i. That's going to be my iterator for the loop. OK? So when I declare int arr5, it's just like in the previous slide. I'm going to get a contiguous place in the memory with five places for five integers. And let's see what I'm going to do. Now, first, I'm going to tell uh, the user 
uh, please enter five numbers, okay? And uh, yeah, so and that's what I want to print. And then in a loop, I'm just gonna see in to each location of my array that number. Okay, so let's do it together. That will be more clear. Okay, I'm gonna open this here. Okay, so let's see. First of all, I declare a uh, array of five. Okay, so we have error, and we have okay. Let's let's write it the same way. Okay, and we have i. Okay. So, first I'm asking the user to enter five numbers, right? So, the user is going to write something like that. 2, 34, 6. Let's write here. So, th this is not a C++ syntax, okay, what I'm showing here. This is just um, to show you what the user would write, okay? This Supposedly, this one is going to be on the screen, okay? Um, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Five numbers, the user. Now, let's do the loop, okay? Um, so, the loop starts from i equals zero. So, our i is going to be zero. This is where we start. Again, this is not a C++ syntax. It's just to show you what's happening in our program. It starts from zero, and we check is I, and let's do here error, okay. And so we starting the initialize stage, we are assigning zero to one. Then we're gonna check our condition. Is I smaller than five? Is it? It's zero. Is zero smaller than five? Yes. So what do we wanna do? We wanna see into error in the zero location. So what's going to be in our zero location? Which number? Two, right? Now we're going to increment i by one. So i is now one. We're going to check the condition. Is one smaller than five? Yes. Let's go in. Let's see in another number. But right now, what's the in, what i would be? What is the index? No, this is, you can see the i right there. I is one. So we want to put in our array in the one location, we want to put the next number, which is 34. And then we're going to increment i. Let's do this. Let's write above the indexes. So this is index 0. This is index 1. Now we we are in we are incrementing one in our loop. It's going to be two. Now we're going to check the condition. Is two smaller than five? Yes. Let's go inside and let's read another number and put it in the two location. So what would be the next number? Six, and it's going to be inside of the array in location number two. And let's increment to one. What did I do? I had I, and now it's going to be three, right? And let's check again. Is three smaller than five? Yes. We're going to go inside and we're going to read another value. The next value is going to be 56. And which location of the array is going to get? That three. Very good. Now we're going to increment the I in our loop. It's going to be four. Okay. And we are asking, we are checking the condition. Is four smaller than five? Yes. Let's go in. Let's go in and let's read another value to the next spot in our array. It's going to be the four, and it's going to get the four location. Okay? And we're going to increment the i to be five, and we're going to ask again, is five smaller than five? No. We're going to end our... 
our loop and let's look in our in our array do we have array of five yes do we have all our stuff all our all the numbers the user entered yes and we have indexes that runs that run from zero to four so we start from zero and we end in the size of the array minus one okay so this is how array works let's continue Okay, let's do another project, but we're gonna start together. Okay, I'm gonna give you the first st starting point, but let's first see what we need to do. Find the max index. Okay, print the index that contains the max array value. So if we think about the array, we distinguish between two things, the value of each element in the array and the index, the index which is the location inside of the array. So what do we want here? We need to find the max what? Number or index? Index, which means we want to find the maximum number, but to print out its location of, in the array, okay? So define array of five ints. In a loop, read values from the console, from the user. And in a loop, and again, this is like just a suggestion. You can do it like just initialize it, but I suggest to do it through the user because it's more practice. Okay, in a loop, go over the array and find the index of the maximum number. Okay, and print the index to the console. So let's see an example. So here is an array, and after assigning values, we have 2, 5, 7, 34, and 1. And which number is the biggest? 34. And the location of it is index 3. So we're going to print out 3. Okay, now let's see. Let's write here what we need. Okay, so we need to define an array of five integers. So int, right? I give it. I give it ARR, just like a conventional name, but you can give it right, whatever you want. We need to give it a size five. Don't forget the semicolon. We need a loop, so we need an iterator, right? So let's do an i that it's going to iterate our loop. And we need a cout to ask the user for please enter. Please enter five integers, okay? And for, we need a c in to read the integers. So the C in is going to be in a loop, right? Because each read is going to take one number. So I'm just going to write here loop. So C in, and we're going to read it to ARR in the I index, right? I'm, I didn't write here how to do the loop. Yes? We do, we do, yep. I haven't got to that part yet, but yep, sure. And now you have two options. You can, as you read the values and put it in the array, you can modify this max number, or you can do it in a different loop later. So we can. So this is this is the part we need to think about an algorithm how to do it. But basically, uh, Robier had a great idea. We're going to have an integer max that it's going to hold the maximum value. And once we, but uh, once we we finish, we need to print out not max, but it's index so should max hold the value or the index yeah so we can even call it max index right um, so we're gonna read it and we need to somehow update max index so 
So I left it here a lot of open-ended. So I really want you to think a little bit like how to do it and I'll support and and then I'll show you how I did it. Well, there are many ways to do it. But. Uh, yeah, let's let's look at the code, okay? Okay, so I'll show you what I did and then we're gonna run it. So I'm, okay, I'm declaring here a constant. So here's another thing in, in C++ language. Uh, when we say, when we declare about a const, we're just saying that this element here size, I'm going to initialize it right here, and we cannot assign any other number to it. And what it's, it's it basically makes it a constant, that any place in the program that, where I'm going to use size, it's just going to be 10. And, and the reason I put constant, so I can initialize my array in that size, I can put size here. So in compilation time, when we build a project, the compiler knows this is 10 and it's not going to change, so we can assign or allocate enough memory. Um, that's a side note. You don't have to use it in your program right now, just for learning the syntax. Okay, so I'm declaring the array. I have a max and I have a max index. So max would, hit, would, would get the maximum number and the max index would be the maximum index. Okay, so first I'm asking the user to enter 10 numbers and then I'm going to read those 10 numbers in the, my array and I'm checking if I'm in the first one I don't have anything to compare with right I don't have any max currently so I can assume my first one that's the baseline that's going to be my maximum number and the index is going to be that index but if we are not in the first number I'm going to check the the, if, if, if the number that I've just read and assign it into ARR in the I location, if it's going to be bigger than my current max, let, so I'm going to update my max to be whatever I just read, and my max index would be that index. And when the loop is over, I'm going to write out the maximum number and the index. And again, this get char is just a little trick to make our console stay up and not close right away. Okay, so let's see. I just changed it, so I hope it's working. Let's check. Let's check. You see, it's too small. A little bit small, right? Let's make it bigger. Okay, so let's put 10 numbers. Let's do 1, 2, 3, 6, 3. Okay, so you see our maximum number is 45, correct? And the index is 0, 1, 2. Okay? Okay. Are there any questions about it or should we move on? Okay, let's move on then.